The timely and accurate application of chemicals to farm crops is becoming very important these days. Farmers often do not have proper equipment to really apply chemicals to the tall crops or low crops timely and efficient. A few years ago, we began to realize the need for a piece of equipment that might fit in between the backpack and the high boy sprayers. Many farmers may have a tractor boom that's good for broadcast or low crops, but when it comes to tobacco or some of the vegetables that are waist high or taller, this equipment does not go through the crop or straddle the crop very effectively. So we began on a concept of a riding sprayer, low powered that would be adequate for small acreages, maybe up to five or 10 acres for farmers who could not afford a high boy, but who wanted to do a better job than they could with a backpack. So the last year or two, we've been testing an economy riding sprayer that fits the needs of this kind of equipment. We designed this piece of equipment from the beginning, have tried to pattern it to where it would be a build your own type piece of equipment for the farmers who would be interested in the equipment. We'll look at some of the features of this economy riding sprayer, point out the construction, the operation, and things that we think has made this sprayer very well received to this point in some of the field trials and demonstrations. Behind me, you will see the framework, the general concept of the machine. We'll go into some of the specific features of it. For instance, it has a four-row boom that is very good size uh, boom width for many of the small crops. The boom is adjustable from down about 20 inches of height for, a bro for broadcast spraying, all the way up to six-foot height for tall crops like tobacco, staked vegetables, sweet corn, or whatever you might want to, to go through. The boom in this position has been used for some crops recently to spray. We have a nozzle over each row, as is typical for application of insecticides or fungicides, and then a nozzle in the middle of the row, or a pair of nozzles, that are angled to spray into the foliage of the crop. This is very important to get the chemicals down into the foliage of the crop for insecticide and fungicide applications. We also have drop nozzles that we'll demonstrate later that shows an extension of these down in to get farther down into the foliage of the crop. The four row boom is pivoted to where if you were to hang this on a fence post or a tree or something in turning, this pivots back so that you do not bend or break the boom. Also, it makes it mighty handy and convenient when you want to store the equipment in that the boom will fold up against the side of the sprayer and be a minimum of width then to go through barn doors or gates and to store in appropriate locations during the off season. Moving on into some of the other features of the machine, it is powered by an eight horsepower engine. We felt it took at least this much uh, power to adequately uh, could propel the machine as well as to power the pump. A belt driven arrangement with an idler clutch for part of the stopping and starting. Behind the shield is a six roller pump for this particular machine, maybe for larger uh, applications or different nozzles, an eight roller pump may be more appropriate. The 30 gallon tank that provides the liquid capacity, uh, in some cases with uh, certain nozzles, this is enough capacity to go over one acre of a crop. In other cases, it may take two or three fill-ups of this 30-gallon tank to adequately provide fungicide application. A transmission that provides three speeds forward and one reverse. This item is typical of several of the components in that they're readily available off-the-shelf items. This transmission is typical of what's used in riding lawnmower equipment. The spray control valve is uh, very readily available, part of the standard spray equipment. It is located right behind the driver's seat for ease and turning on and off as you need to at the end of the rows or for stopping and starting the spray application. Also, as part of this control valve is a pressure regulator so that you can adjust the pressure on the nozzles for whatever type application you're using. The seat for the driver, as I've already mentioned, Right below the seat in a convenient position is the lever that engages and disengages the spray pump, a spring-loaded uh, tension on the pump that engages a belt for starting and stopping the sprayer as you need the pressure. The steering wheel, a single shaft and bearings for the front wheel for simplicity and ease and economy in providing steering for the machine. A clutch pedal and a brake pedal, both 
located here for foot operation, shielding on the wheels and side of the machine to help get through the tall tobacco where the leaves may be extending out into the middle or any other crop that would require some shielding to keep the framework of the machine from tearing into the leaves. These are several features on this side of the machine. The framework extends up over the row to an outrigger wheel on the other side to provide stability. We have counterbalance weights that are built into this framework or can be added or removed to give weight on the outrigger wheel to give stability on sloping ground. Some people may ask, well, what slope ground can you operate on safely? Even if we determined the slope and presented that in some terms of a, a percentage slope, somebody could still turn a machine over on level ground as they do with tractors and other equipment anyway. So our feeling here is that this will give as good a stability as you need on the kind of slope land you'll be transplanting and cultivating anyway. And it's up to the operator to be careful to operate the machine and not get into dangerous situations that would cause a turnover or other unsafe operation. Extra weights could be added here if need be on a particularly sloping land. So we feel this will operate on slopes that you're going to be operating your tractor equipment on anyway. Again, the shielding on this side wheel to allow this wheel to go through the rows without uh, damage to the leaves of the crop. And of course the framework, the, the boom that extends on out on this side with the same pivoting action as we mentioned on the other side of the machine. As mentioned earlier, drop nozzles are very important to get chemical applications down into the foliage of the plant. Just a boom over the top is certainly inadequate, inefficient, and somewhat ineffective in getting chemicals into the foliage for insects and disease. This drop nozzle applies quite easily to this boom. A cap can be removed from this particular short drop nozzle. Then the extension can be screwed right on and attached, tightened up fairly quickly and easily. And now we have an additional set of nozzles down low that applies the chemical in to the foliage horizontally, works among the leaves. That set, along with this set, and the one nozzle over the row provides a very good broad coverage getting into the foliage. As plants grow taller, the boom can be raised and another extension yet added to the bottom of this to give three sets of nozzles that really gets the most effective control into tall crops like tobacco or steak tomatoes or other crops that might need that kind of protection. Another question that is often asked is how much does it cost and where can I buy one? At this point in time, this is the only machine available. It's our experimental unit that we've been testing and developing the past year. Our plans are to prepare this in a build your own kind of blueprint and instructions such that you can build your unit in your local shop, farm shop, or maybe the vocational ag departments can help build these. Or if somebody wishes to build and sell them, then that will be a, a possibility. We intend to finish up the blueprints for the machines in the winter of 86 and have them available in the spring or late winter of 87 for distribution through farmers through the county extension offices. Right now, the cost that we have in this machine is about $1,200 for parts. If you buy new engines, transmissions, wheels, pretty much across the counter at the best prices you can find. Of course, if you have some of that equipment already on hand from other uses that is still workable and usable, then you can cut that cost considerably. The engine, transmission, and wheels, and pump are the main cost, in fact, about half of the total cost of the equipment. The nozzles and control valves and some other parts are the next largest cost. So by using available materials, you should be able to trim that $1,200 considerably. But even at that, it's a pretty effective piece of equipment for that kind of parts cost if you can get it built in your own shop or somewhere for a reasonable labor cost. So be looking for the availability of this kind of information later in the winter and spring. And we hope that this kind of equipment will be of use to many farmers throughout Kentucky in the coming months and years.